Um, yes. Ah, uh, just a moment. I'll I'll be with you. Right. Yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. How about using conductive plastic instead of fragile silicon wafer and creating electronic components on its surface simply by printing with an inkjet printer? Not as fast and tiny as conventional silicon chips, but more flexible and much cheaper, the plastic electronics is finding its way into commercial products. The home of the plastic electronics is here at the Cavendish Laboratory of the University of Cambridge. And here is Professor Richard Friend. Well, I had started in the mid-1980s um, a programme to look at how we could use molecules, actually polymers, because polymers are convenient to process. It's possible to make a uniform thickness film of a polymer, a plastic, by just painting it down onto a substrate. And then in 1989, in, 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 uh, in a way that was um, uh, partly just luck, um, we discovered that if we sandwiched a, a structure, one of these plastic semiconductors between two electrodes and put the right voltage on, uh, it, was, it was emitting light. We, we rushed off to work out how, how to file a patent on it because we could just see, in, obviously, yeah. that y instead of just making light emitting diodes one by one uh, out of little chips of a wafer of gallium arsenide, there was the possibility of, of doing electronics over a large area. It was obviously of enormous potential. Displays were and still are the main use of the plastic electronics. They offer better contrast ratio, they are power efficient and very thin, and yes, they are almost unbreakable when comparing with glass displays. Plastics in principle can do everything, so light emitting diodes look pretty good and they are in the marketplace. Thin film transistors where the, the big attribute is low process temperature and therefore the ability to make flexible structures, uh, that's just about to be on the market, uh, we hope in a very big way. Another important space is solar cells and there's a, a lot of research interest in actually making some relatively small modifications to the, the semiconductor device architecture that we have in the light emitting diodes. You can switch so that they will function in the opposite sense, so they'll absorb light, separate charge, and run as a solar cell. I, I think you know, a lot of the way we use electronics at the moment is very much controlled by actually some undesirable characteristics of the technology. Silicon and the inorganics have created applications for semiconductors which are defined by the nature of those semiconductors and the way that you can use them. What's interesting is what we can do as we are able to make much larger areas of semiconductor structures and make them at lower temperatures and therefore put them uh, on flexible substrates, maybe put them directly onto cornflake packets. They might make the cornflakes too expensive, I don't know. <laughs> yeah.